My name is David Daniel Ball and these are the headlines for Friday the 20th of March 2009. A 10th Australian soldier has been killed in Afghanistan. Rudd has sent another soldier to his death with his under-equipped expedition. Labour will reject amended workplace bills, says Swan. On the eve of the Queensland elections, the ALP are divided over many things. Lie for Fritzel over House of Horror Abuse. Australia on the ropes, out for 209 in Cape Town for cricket. Dimitro hits out at AFL Doomsayers. Housing starts slump to eight-year low. On the eve of the Queensland elections, it is worth noting that Rudd has done nothing that he originally promised in his election campaign in 07. UK rejects calls to cap executive pay. Autopsy confirms head knock killed Natasha Richardson. Polls, newspapers show swing towards Springborg, but not a sufficient one. Police investigating Darwich's murder charge two men. Teacher sacked every three weeks for sex crimes. Can't they get rid of that teacher once and for all? Fast food giant funding nation's McMaths. Major quake hits Tonga region and labor loses on small business definition. And in comments, time for some actual financial responsibility. The government talks the talk on financial responsibility, but it's about time it walks a walk, according to Alan Jones. Power and a Half by Tim Blair. Will you be resurrecting the Hour of Power this year, asks Reader Steve. Why, yes I will. The Hour of Power is already leading Christmas as this site's favorite annual event. And this year it may even be extended by 30 minutes to compete with an emerging force. We know as well as you do that Earth Hour has no impact on our climate, so we're doing even more by supporting Earth Hour and a Half, the only mass action guaranteed 50% more effective than Earth Hour. Trick in the camera. A door kicking is taken out of context. Australia's most controversial sheik, Taj Din Al Hilali, has been caught on videotape kicking in a door at his own mosque before calling police to report an act of vandalism. And an update, further mosque mayhem, strong emotions led to a brawl outside the mosque when Sheikh Hilali publicly accused several young men arriving to pray as those he believed leaked security footage to a TV network. Some said they believe the time has come to remove him from office. Remove him? No chance, he'll just kick his way inside again. Don't mention the divorces, the phrase animal husbandry confounds Miami Democrat Lysenia Bullard. People are taking these animals as their husbands? What's husbandry, she asked. Some senators stifle their laughter as Senator Charlie Dean, an Inverness Republican, explained that husbandry is raising and caring for animals. Bullard didn't get it. So... Maybe was the reason the lady was so upset about that monkey? Bullard asked, referring to a Connecticut case where a woman's suburban chimpanzee went mad and was shot. Filter has gone to the dogs. Uh, the potential reach of Rudd government's new filter is a worry. The website of a Queensland dentist, a tuck shop convener, and a kennel operator have been included on a secret blacklist of sites to be banned by Australia's communications watchdog. Communications Minister Stephen Conroy yesterday said the leaked list included proposed banned sites, but denied it was the ACMA blacklist. Maybe just a, a love labor blacklist. From Andrew Bolt, Rudd's need for love. Mark Latham, whatever his failings as a politician, has become a superb columnist. That's Andrew Bolt's comment, not mine. It's a pity the Financial Review won't put his work on the internet, so you'll have to make do with this taste. And Andrew Bolt gives this item. Andrew feels that this is spot on. He is highly sympathetic to the ALP. However, Rudd has shown no strength or character and the Australian public despise it. However, Rudd is supported by the left-wing industry, including big business. There is nothing to take pride in, but if one watches even from a distance, one sees frailty and fear in Rudd. Bly overboard from Andrew Bolt, still tight but far closer than Labour counted on when dashing to an early poll before the worst was known. And as Andrew Bolt later fesses up, every one of the four journalists for working with him are also paid spinners for Labour politicians, including himself. Prompter prompted, Barack Obama's teleprompter is now blogging, teleprompter. Is the president ever argumentative with you or is he compliant with your instructions? 
Good question. Look, like any relationship, we have our ups and downs. Last year on the campaign trail, the big guy came to me and told me that, like the cigarettes, he really felt like he needed to start working through his dependency. Then he went out and did his town hall session on healthcare. Suffice it to say, we aren't having those unpleasant discussions anymore. How it got so hot, or not, IPCC reviewer Steve McIntyre gives a brilliant discussion with graphs of how the infamous hockey stick became a poster child of the global warming believers and why it's not to be trusted. I've left more for you there at that link. Less to connect them, marvellous multicultural Sydney, relatives of members of the Bikey Club Notorious may have been targeted in one of two drive-by shootings in Sydney's West earlier yesterday. The attacks may be retaliation for a drive-by shooting at the house of a senior member of the Bandidos Motorcycle Club Blacktown chapter early on Monday. Notorious is suspected of being behind the shooting as well as attacks on the Nomads Clubhouse in Marrickville and the Hells Angels Clubhouse in Petersham in recent months. Notorious, thought to have been formed in 2007, is run by Lebanese-Australian Christian with long-standing links to one of Sydney's most well-known underworld families. Police and underworld sources have indicated that Notorious is relying heavily on Islander muscle. Obama's new speak bans terrorism with one word. Barack Obama's new Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano has done what the Bush administration couldn't and abolished terrorism. Spiegel, Madam Secretary, in your first testimony to the U.S. Congress as Homeland Security Secretary, you never mentioned the word terrorism. Does Islamist terrorism suddenly no longer pose a threat to your country? Napolitano, of course it does. I presume there's always a threat from terrorism. In my speech, although I did not use the word terrorism, I referred to man-caused disasters. That is perhaps only a nuance, but it demonstrates what we want to move away from the politics of fear towards a policy of being prepared for all risks that can occur. This is the authentic left at home more with words and deeds. How safe is America now? No way we'll move millions to green jobs. Keith Orcherson is rightly skeptical of airy green claims that slashing emissions won't hurt because we can just move workers from gassy jobs to green ones. Wait until they're visited by Mr. Rubb. The Obama House shows again the diplomatic skills that made its dealings with Britain's Prime Minister and Russia's Foreign Minister such fun. This time, the victim is the President of Brazil, Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva. His meet and greet with the US President was bumped to Saturday, and when the White House announced his official visit, they misspelled his name. Silva Aid said the trip was pushed forward from Tuesday because of the St. Patrick's Day holiday, making Latin America once again look like an afterthought. Then, the the White House announcement misspelled his name as Luis Ignacio and put Lula, a nickname that uh, decades ago became a legal part of a Brazilian leader's name, in quotes. Comrade Kim finds his Lord Haw Haw, Britain's ambassador to North Korea, Peter Hughes describes a paradise, which he seems to believe is North Korea. Oliver Cam describes a donkey, which he demonstrates to be North Korea. Has the West forgotten what evil looks like and how to resist it? And I've included a transcript from the O'Reilly Factor, which is well worth taking a look at, and I'll leave it there at the link. Why the far left is using Megan McCain as a political pawn.